on okay, Facebook. Awesome. Okay, we're ready in five, four, three, two, one. Just spinning a minute. <laughs> Should be live now. Hi everyone, it's Eleanor here from Professional Beauty. Today I'm joined by Anna Nicholas, who's the co-director of AB Beauty Consultancy. And today we're going to be discussing how salon owners can keep their team members motivated when they reopen, as well as raising spirits in the salon. So Anna, it's great to have you this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, lovely to be here. It's great to have you. Thank so you. we'll have some time at the question some time for questions at the end of the webinar so if you've got any questions for Anna then please do send them free and we'll make sure um, we get through to those at the end but Anna to start off with um, many salon owners and spa owners will be fully reopening their treatment menus from the 1st of August um, as clients book in for more treatments what are some ways owners can, can, can prepare themselves for their teams um, for more bookings? I think one of the things is obviously they have already opened so hopefully they're feeling quite you know they've gone into it they're not offering all the treatments so they've kind of trialed it a little bit I think little things like having your priority in your waiting list also having full-time receptionists so that no calls and emails go unmissed I think people are really you know looking forward to having facials and eyebrow waxes and lip waxes and everything so you want people to be able to get through to your salon so that you can book those in. I think everybody understanding the, guide, the government guidelines and supporting each other. I think also all the staff being fully trained so they understand how the salon is operating um, with preparing themselves and the, the teams for more bookings. I think also now with everything being a little bit different, um, understanding your new client journey really and ensuring this is even better than it used to be. So I think that kind of like gives people a lot of confidence. Um, also, obviously with at the moment, having to have sort of the 15 minutes in between each treatment is very different. But I think obviously getting your team to maximize that so that you know you're booking a treatment, then your 15 minutes, then another treatment, not leaving gaps so that you're maximizing your revenue within your diary as well is really important. And I think for the teams to feel safe, for them to understand the guidelines, and if they're unsure about anything, just to speak out really. I think everybody's in the same boat and sort of working as a team to sort of prepare their, you know, their diaries and get used to having full columns again. Um, it just becomes sort of a, a, a team effort really. Definitely good advice. And yeah, preparation is, is key, I guess. Yeah. Um, some businesses might be operating some longer hours to accommodate the demand from clients and um, what are some ways that owners and their teams can avoid burnout if they might be opening for longer hours in the day? Yeah I mean I certainly know a few salons that have come when they're doing their different bubbles they're kind of like one bubble will work like nine till nine and then they'll have a day off and then that other bubble will work which I think is great because I think you're in for the whole day rather than splitting it so ideally I think that's good but it is a long day so I think making sure that they all take you know their full lunch break i think getting out getting outside having a walk getting some fresh air eating healthy drinking lots of water and i just think creating an environment where you're keeping an eye on your staff so some people i absolutely feel some staff can they can do nine till nine you know they've, they've got that but other people would really struggle with that so i think again looking at your team individually and making sure that it is working for everybody um Espa, for example i was talking to a lady at Espa this week and they've created like um rituals so they're putting like rituals in for staff so taking kind of like five minutes in the morning and following this ritual then they've got a lunchtime one for their staff and an after work one and i thought that was really lovely because it's got a lot of thought behind it of how they can you know make sure that their staff are protected from you know suddenly having sort of 16 weeks off coming back into an environment that is very different um so i thought that was lovely i think things like affirmations around the staff room and everything just to kind of lift everybody's spirits would be lovely um and having daily team meetings as well um because i think if and and one-to-one -one meetings because like i say individuals may be feeling oh this is really tough for me and they might just think everybody around them is coping with it but that's not necessarily the truth 
So I think checking in with people as individuals to see how they're coping with it. Um, and then on the flip side of that, for owners to, you know, have support, because I think owners have probably gone back into their business thinking, I need to do this, I need to get this, do you know what I mean? And it be, and, and sort of like really trying to do everything on their own. So again, for owners to kind of delegate to their team or get support from other people so that they don't kind of like get to burn out as well. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, and speaking of sort of, I guess, like the burnout and longer hours, um, PPE is another thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. That can take its toll if you're wearing that for a long time. Um, what are some ways that we can sort of support team members and also salon owners throughout the day when they're wearing PPE? Yeah, I think again, it's it's very different, Eleanor, isn't it? You know, suddenly you've suddenly got a visor and you've got aprons and, and, uh, and lots of different things. So I think, again, making sure that when you're having your breaks, you remove it, you take a little bit of time, get some fresh air away from that. Um, and I think it's important for salon owners and spas to create space where, where their staff can do this. Um, I think it will take a little bit of a time to adapt and get used to working with it. You know, suddenly you've got a visor on and you're doing a manicure or close contact work like that. It is very different and it will, you know, take, and especially people that wear glasses and suddenly they've got glasses and their visor. So again, that's, that's very, very different. And also again, communicating with them. How does it feel? Are there certain treatments that you're struggling with doing with the, with the PPE on? And kind of like, and also I know that there's lots of different PPE on the market. So there's kind of like ones with the sponge here, there's ones that kind of like have straps. So again, it may be that some people feel more comfortable with different kinds of PPE visor headwear. So I think again, talking to them, trialing different ones so that if they feel comfortable then obviously they're going to be able to do their treatments a lot better and just um and i think also the guidance might change you know it it, it 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 will sort of get to that point so again keeping up together with the guidance um keeping on forums being aware of what's happening and also i think it's quite good to be on the forums for things like this as well because people will have little tips you know they've tried something and it's worked and they think oh, that's brilliant and then you could try it and it works so i think yeah, I think it, it is unusual, but there's lots of different things you can do to get used to it as well. And it is like anything, eventually you will kind of, it will become like second nature, really. Definitely. I guess it's good to um, try a few different options and see yes. what works best, really. Absolutely. We had, I, I had, we had worn some the other day that had sort of the sponge across the top. Um, and then there was the ones with the strap and half the girls love the sponge one, half the girls love the strap one. So I think, again, it's very individual. And as long as that person feels comfortable, then you, you feel a lot better wearing it, don't you? A lot more comfortable. Definitely. That's good advice. Um, and as business owners prepare for more bookings from the 1st of August, when more treatments will be more available, what are some of the ways that we can boost morale against team members when it becomes really busy in the salon? Yeah, I think suddenly they've, you know, everyone's gone from having sort of 16 weeks off, coming back into an environment, like we say, that is very different. And I think it's, it's so important to get that morale right from the beginning. Very, very important. You want your team to come in. I think you want them to feel very safe. So I think, you know, you want them to feel safe. You want them to understand the guidelines. I think that's very important. I think if they understand the guidelines, then they will feel a lot more confident. I think a big thing for me would be praise. I think it is a different, you know, a different times and whatever. Giving your staff praise, saying thank you, um, you know, when they're, you know, obviously trying to adapt to a different situation supporting them I think staff need support right now um, they need to know that you are trying your best to do everything you can for them to support you know how their their different working environment um, I think again communicating with them listening to them that's very important listening to them and then actioning their feedback as well different people have different concerns so I think morale as an overall team is very important but I think it is also look, looking at that individually as well um, I think you need to put targets into place again as business owners as spa owners having your business closed for this amount of time you need to get as a salon owner you need to get back and you need to make sure that your revenue is where it is as quickly as possible but I think doing that in a way where you're putting your targets into place where everybody is sure of what you're doing, but also rewarding the staff for helping you get back to there to achieve it as well. Um, 
little things that can just boost a bit of morale like coming in in the morning with coffee for everybody or a croissant or you know we used we did this thing um where we kind of like used to have a list of their favorite magazine we get asked them to fill in a sheet and it was like your favorite magazine your favorite bottle of wine your favorite chocolate and they'd fill it in and they kind of give it you and they forget you forget they filled it in and then you might just come in one day with somebody's favorite magazine or favorite bottle of wine so just little things to you know let them know that you are supporting them and you want them to be happy i think also when you're bringing them back into the business it's really important to reunite them as a team. They have spent a lot of time away from each other. Um, and just maybe, you know, say that, you know, we want to come back stronger and better and working as a team to go through this. And then another thing that I always kind of think is keeping calm. Calm helps people feel, you know, better about everything, making sure that you're keeping your staff healthy. And I think especially now more than ever that the salon is really organized everybody knows exactly how this new journey works so that they feel that you know they've got that confidence and that will bring up their morale so i think there's lots of things you can do but i think looking at it as a team and looking at it individually as well is very important brilliant advice and how can owners support team members who maybe might be feeling a bit apprehensive as the salon gets busier so if you've maybe got a a member of staff that's feeling particularly nervous what are some yeah. things that you can do yeah and I think there will be and I think again individually some people will come back to work and they'll be like you know they just take it they just get on with it they deal with it but there will be lots of people that will feel you know different anxieties about it different feelings about it how's it going to work and and everything and I think also being off work for this amount of time it's a long time you're suddenly you're going back into your environment where you feel comfortable and you know what you're doing, but the working environment is very, very different. So I think putting support in place, so obviously everybody at the moment has the 15 minute gap in between treatments. I think it's very important to have um, support where you've got say somebody on reception all the time so they you can pass your client over to your receptionist to recommend you know you, the retail that you're saying that, that, that you're suggesting that client should take to do your rebooking um, to take the bills and carry on that part of the journey so that your staff can go back to the treatment room and you know do the do the clean get set up for the for the next treatment so you're not putting any stress on them to be running around like crazy especially if they're on these longer days I think getting your staff to walk through the client journey and the staff journey so that they understand both is really important and also again from a salon owner's point of view explaining the, the importance now of maximizing the columns to create that revenue after being having your business closed for so long um, again one-to-one -one meetings so that you're supporting them giving them reassurance as well you're here you want you know you need them to give you feedback you want them to say if things aren't working and about how they feel and again answering their questions honestly and providing solutions for that as well um while obviously following all the government guidelines because i think if you feel that you're following that you know you're doing the right thing and i think every salon in the country and every spa and you know everywhere is 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 in the same situation as well so sort of remembering that it's not only you it's everybody that's having to to change to this new way um and i think also if people are feeling a bit apprehensive you as an owner to sort of notice that try and notice that quite quickly and address it as quickly as you can so that it doesn't escalate really that's good advice. Um, and what are some ways that salon owners can reward their staff? Are there any incentives that can be spirits in the salon? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. I think, again, everybody is driven differently. Everybody is motivated by different things, whether that be days off, whether that be products, whether that be vouchers, whether that be days out, whether that be team, you know, team events or whatever. So I think there's lots of different things you can do. I think there's sort of retail incentives you can do, treatment incentives. We used to do, you know, chase the £10. That always used to create a, a nice sort of competition within the salon where you have like a £10 note and every time you sell a product you stick it on the, the whiteboard with that person's name next to it and then the next minute you know someone else has sold something so they're putting their name up there so it creates a bit of fun I think that's another thing obviously everything is very serious at the moment in the salon so creating a little bit of a fun environment as well so people feel a little bit more relaxed and obviously the happiness is um is so important 
random gestures. So you just see that somebody is trying really hard, maybe struggling a little bit with the change, but maybe just random gestures, like I said, of, you know, a magazine or a bottle of wine or something at the end of their day. Um, again, thank yous. I think it doesn't always have to be a gift or monetary money or anything like that. I think being appreciated is a huge, huge incentive and making sure your staff, you know, feel appreciated by you is very important. Asking your product houses for help. So, you know, talking to whoever your brands are in your salon and saying, you know, can we have products or whatever to help us out to like get the girls motivated again and using the products. Um, restaurant vouchers, that would be a good thing right now. I think with the government doing the sort of the 50% off in a, within a lot of restaurants, uh, Monday to Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, if you're to give your, your staff a voucher for X amount, it's going to be worth double because they get 50% off. So that might be a nice, a nice route. Um, and competitions in the salon as well. Competition can be healthy. People thrive on competition, like competition. Um, therapist of the month, that's a good one. Again, you know, looking at somebody that's really excelled in lots of different ways. Um, and also if you've got multiple sites, kind of like having competitions that put each tea, each salon against each other and kind of like putting that up each week sort of which salon is winning I think that creates nice competition but it also brings the team in that salon together because they're trying to kind of be the salon that wins out of all the sites but yeah I think there's lots of things you can do that's great to about the competitions because that adds like an element yeah. of fun to the day as well absolutely yeah definitely and I think that's important you know everything it does feel a little bit serious at the moment so creating a bit of fun and you know making sure your staff are happy is 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 going to be really really important amazing and what are some ways that owners can support staff who have been affected personally by the pandemic yeah i think this is a very important point i think you know some people would come in and quite openly um talk about it i think other people wouldn't and would probably kind of like just keep it to themselves so my view on this really is to have like a back to work one-to-one -one interview i think again this has to be on one-to-one -one. it's very personal it's very emotional for some people what, what you know the pandemic and like you say they might have been affected personally within their families or friends but they might not want to outwardly talk about that. So I think a one-to-one -one meeting is very important. Talk it through, ask them how they feel, ask them how you can support them um, and let, you, let them know that you're there for them. I think that's very important. And being kind, I think, you know, we have gone through a very strange time. So know that there's a kindness element there that, you know, they can come and talk to you um, knowing that they, approach, they can approach you or your salon manager or, beauty therapist or you know anyone that they can talk to but I think you know keeping it in is just not healthy because it's better sort of to talk to and also as an owner as a salon owner of a business or a spa manager or whatever you want to know because if that person has sort of very low times or very whatever you and you understand why then you're a lot more prepared to be able to sort of understand why they're feeling like that definitely that communication is so important isn't it huge absolutely very much with that on a one-to-one -one basis so that they feel that it was just you and them talking about it and it doesn't need to be the whole world the whole salon that knows about it as long as you as their manager or their or the owner know about it then you're aware of how they're feeling that's really important absolutely for everyone watching we're going to be um doing a q a at the end of this webinar so if you've got any questions for Anna, then please do send them through either on facebook or on zoom whichever platform you're watching um, next question from me though, Anna. Um, to Boost Apprenticeships, the Chancellor committed to paying businesses who hire apprentices um, a total of £2,000 for those aged 24 and under and £1,500 for apprentices aged 25, age 25 and over. So for salons who are looking to hire these apprentices, what, are, what advice would you give business owners who are looking to recruit? Yeah, I think this is fabulous from the government. Absolutely fabulous. I think also it will help hopefully bring a lot more people into the you know into the industry and people young girls wanting to come into it um i think you know i from experience we've ha i used i have had apprentices before and i think firstly very importantly is that they want to do it 
they're passionate about it they want to do well they want to learn they have that you know that real kind of like passion in them about it and then I feel if they if they are and it's something they really want to do I think it can be a fabulous thing for them and I think it can be a fabulous thing for the salon because it works both ways then you want to develop them you want them to do well you want to spend time with them you want to train and develop them because if they're putting in everything and showing that they want it then I think it's a fabulous thing I think also they haven't worked within a beauty environment so they're they're very new so you can kind of um you know train them to do things how you want and how you work as a salon which is very important so they kind of like come in and they're doing everything within your procedures and standards that you how you want them to do it i think very importantly with apprentices is that you make sure that before you take an apprentice on that you know you've got the time i think you can't just expect them to come in and not spend any time with them it not that it's time consuming but it needs to have time from yourself to to, to, to devote to it definitely um, another thing that you can do is like allocate a buddy alongside them so that they've got like a mentor within the salon and that could be like a senior therapist that kind of like you know keeps an eye out for them keeps them on track looks at their development notes looks at what they're training looks at what ne they're next supposed to be doing I think that's a great thing to do as well um, and a great way of doing this as a salon owner is ca contacting all the local colleges and I think right now having a zoom call with a college lecturer and talking about what you offer as a salon and what apprentices they've got and I think suiting that apprentice to your salon or spa environment as well is really important. But I think it's a great thing, really great. No, definitely, it's a good, good incentive. Um, yeah. And what measures can salon owners take to retain their teams and promote career advancement in the salon? Yeah, I think, again, coming back in after the, um, the pandemic, I think, you know, pay, pay them fairly if you can, when, wherever you know, I think that's very important and give them a good commission structure so that people that are driven, they will kind of like really try and hit their targets to increase their commission levels so that they know that they can earn a better salary, um, communicate with them, check in with them daily, I think staff retention and retaining your team is a lot to do with having a happy team. So it's about you as a salon owner or a spa manager or a spa owner creating an environment where your team are happy. I think ev everybody's at work a lot of hours in a week. And I think to have to be happy at work will, you know, it will make them want to be their best. It will make them want to make the client journey wonderful. It will make them want to really, really work as hard as they possibly can. Because I think you just want your, and I, you know, once you've got a happy team, I personally feel that everything comes into place, works and works. Um, I think the working environment is a different place now um, at the moment and we need to kind of like make them feel safe, um, appreciating them and valuing them as an individual and as teams as well is really important. It is a demanding job, being a beauty therapist, being a, a spa manager, a spa a, a owner, it is demanding, it has lots of different demanding um, parts of it and now and for the foreseeable future it's it's different as well so I think understanding that and also looking at how long they've been with you what their strengths are and getting training and development plans in place so that you've got something that you're aiming for so okay we're sitting here now and in three months time if you do this this and this there may be a, an opportunity of a senior therapist role we used to have ambassador roles as well so there would be an ambassador of a brand range so that you you've got progression within your environment because People want progression, people want to learn, people want to develop. So you've got to sort of put these things into place. And also importantly, letting them know how they get there. You know, so if you've got young girls that look up at senior therapists and ambassadors, how do I get there? What do I need to do to be good enough to, to get to that role as well? Um, having a six month um, sort of expectations of training and development plan and them knowing what the next role is. And then one-to-ones, whether that be with yourself as a salon owner or a, or a senior therapist or salon manager, to discuss their goals, their ideas, let them have their input. I think that's very important. And then how they get from where they are now to where they want to be to, to be promoted within their career. Great advice. And how can salon owners promote a good, um, good uh, work-life balance in the salon going forward? Yeah, I think... I personally feel that lockdown has 
in a way to a lot of people it's made people stop it's made people reassess how they feel i think for a lot of people for, for a while they have gone at a slower pace because you've had to you know people haven't been in work they've had to slow down um i think it's probably made a, a lot of people appreciate what they have within their working environment how much they love it and how much they miss it after being out of it for this long um, and I think it's made a lot of people think about their future as well, you know, what they really want to do. And so going back into that, I think people are more going to be thinking about how they want to be at work and how they want to be at home and getting that balance. So I think as a salon owner, you can listen to them. I think um, being flexible as well. I think, you know, flexible, flexible working to a certain degree. So I think if you can if you've got therapists that are, you know, have children or, you know, have husbands with jobs in this, you know, long hours and everything. I think what you need to do is look at what hours you can give your staff, but it has to obviously work both ways. It has to also work for your business, you know, so that they're, but I think having that, knowing when you're at work, that is what you devote. That's the time you're devoting to work. And then the time you have at home is the time you work at home. Uh, sorry, the time you are at home and making that right for people so that not, kind of like feeling stressed about that um i think having areas in the salon where they can take a little bit of time out you know relax and whatever um and creating happiness as well i think creating happiness at work also then drifts into your home life and vice versa so lots of different things i think you can do in the salon and again communicating how is this working for you now and you know how can we make that better because I think work-life balance is just so important in so many different in so many people's lives, and I think this time out um, over these sixteen weeks will have made people think about that a lot more. So I think as a an, an owner or a manager, it's time to really think: okay, how can we keep you know our staff happy and get create this um, work-life balance? Definitely, I think yeah, the lockdown has really sort of made people reevaluate things, hasn't it? <laughs> amazing advice so we're now moving on to the Q&A section so if anyone watching if you've got a question for Anna please do pop them through um, so Anna if people are looking to hire um, post coronavirus what are some of the key skills you should be looking for working in a salon post coronavirus yeah I think also um, there will be unfortunately salons that have closed down I mean I don't think any statistics have come out on that yet but I think obviously there will so there will be people looking for um for looking for new jobs I think it's very important to sort of obviously look at whether that person is best suited to a salon or a spa looking at you know where they've been the experience they've had talking to them about their strengths and weaknesses and the environment that they want to come in how they want to develop and within your environment looking at them as a person obviously trades testing is very important so that you know the standard of their treatments but really talking to them about what they're looking to do and what they want for their future because recruitment now will be kind of like sort of like this you know there probably will be more therapists whereas obviously for a long time there has been a bit of a shortage you know salons and spas really struggling to a certain extent you know uh, before lockdown of finding you know great staff and getting enough people into the industry training in beauty therapy so i think there will be more staff out there now so going into an environment that you feel is good for you and a fit for both the salon and the therapist definitely that's good advice. Um, Sam on Facebook says, um, how do you recommend tackling the changing clients' expectations and the service they expect and the new parameters? Um, do you recommend a new script for therapists? Yeah, I mean, we, we've been look, I've been looking at client journey and everything over the last few weeks. And I think, I think for me personally, I think most importantly is that your, your team feel confident with your new client journey i think what, what i would do is i would look back at your client journey what it was before and think to yourself okay we've got to adapt this so there's certain obviously you have to follow the government guidelines so i think firstly and foremostly putting those government guidelines into place of how you're going to work but then looking at your client journey and thinking okay what can we do now to make this better rather than wanting your clients to come in thinking 
oh it's just it just doesn't feel like it used to or whatever I, you know it will be different and clients will know it will be different and i think clients will expect it to be different so i think you need to go above and beyond what your client journey was with these changes mm -hmm. so that you're almost like wowing them and they're thinking oh we didn't used to get this and that could be something simple like you know a couple of little samples in a bag at the end of the treatment it could be you know how you set up your rooms and, and, and lots of different things like that so i think taking it back to what you used to do making it better and then putting the guidelines within that as well brilliant and um, we've had lots of comments on facebook and um, jamie says i love the idea of small incentives at this time when salons are trying to financially recover it's a good it's good to have motivated staff with small rewards and a little bit of fun absolutely yeah i think fun's one of the things i think people are you know staff and owners are going to go back into you know these environments and feel lots of different emotions and I think, it, of course, it needs to be serious, but I think you have to have a little bit of a fun element in there to keep things a little bit lighter and also, you know, creating that happy environment as well. Definitely. Definitely good advice. Um, I think that's all we have time for now. But Anna, thank you so much for joining us and Pleasure. sharing Pleasure. your advice. It's been brilliant to have you. And thank uh, you, Eleanor. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.